This week is going to be a very interesting week, politically speaking, in this country. All roads will be leading to Kasarani Stadium, where the Udim Party leader, Right Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga, will be expected to make a major political announcement. And the entire country is actually glued and waiting for that big day. And as you are aware, Raila Amolo Dinga has been holding series of Azimio La Umoja meetings across the country. Those meetings is what is going to culminate into that major announcement. And the politics of this country is definitely going to change. Maybe Raila Dinga is going to announce to the country that he's not going to run. But personally, I'm sure that Raila Dinga is going to announce to the country that he's going to run for the presidency in 2022. And for those who follow the politics in this country, you must have realized that the handshake between President Ru Kenyatta and Raila Amolo Dinga in March 2018 actually shaped or is shaping the politics of this country. One man, the Deputy President Dr. William Samai Ruto, refused to be part of that handshake. The idea behind the handshake was to help President Ru Kenyatta mobilize the Kikuyu votes for Raila Amolo Dinga. But the Deputy President was keen and refused to join that handshake. So as we speak today, the deputy president has been focusing on how he could retain or thwart any attempt by the president and Raila Molodinga to penetrate the larger Mount Kenya region. And Raila Molodinga held the last Azimio meeting in uh, Nyeri. And the past two days, that was on Saturday and yesterday, Sunday, William Samuel Ruto also camped in Nyeri. Why was the deputy president camping in Nyeri? And if you followed the deputy president event in Nyeri on Saturday and Sunday, the deputy president has clearly developed new strategies of dealing with the president Ru Kenyatta and Raila Molodinga in the entire Mount Kenya region. So in this video, I want to explain to you guys the new strategies which the deputy president has come up with and whether these strategies are actually going to stop Raila Molo Dinga and President Ruru Kenyatta from gaining grounds in the larger Mount Kenya region. Because the fact of the matter is that initially it was thought that Raila Dinga was not going to make any progress or uh, was not going to succeed in the larger Mount Kenya region. But when he started with the Zimula Umoja meetings, Crowd started attending his meetings and that took William Ruto and his brigades by surprise. So he had to go back and devise new strategies. So before we get into these strategies, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for your support. Without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. The fact that you guys share videos, give them the thumbs up, drop your comments, is why the channel is growing. So I want to make a personal appeal to you guys because I've been away. I want you guys to just give this particular video thumbs up. And if there's any strategy which I'm not going to mention, please, you can also just drop it in the, new, in the comments section. And the comments, I mean, and the strategy should be in line with what you've observed with the deputy president of late, especially in his rallies in the larger Mount Kenya region. Now let us get back to the main issue and try to be very brief, precise, and to the point. Now what are the new strategies which William Ruto is using in the larger Mount Kenya region? Because the fact is he has changed his strategies. Previously what would happen was that the deputy president would organize meetings, he would ensure that he goes there with as many members of parliament as possible, just to prove that he has the numbers, then he would sit there, watch the members of parliament, hit on President Uru Kenyatta, he will rise up, just talk his issues, then go back. But he has changed the strategy. What are some of his new or latest strategies? The first one is branding. I've never seen the kind of branding I'm seeing William Ruto 
employing in UDA and specifically targeted at the larger Mount Kenya region. William Ruto, before going to Nyeri, was in a rich valley. Of course, you would see those, those wheelbarrows branded, you'll see a few people in yellow there, but not what you are seeing in the larger Mount Kenya region. Well, in Nyeri yesterday and on Saturday, there was those women who were fully branded from toe to head. Who branded them? And what kind of branding is that? Amazing. That's the fact. Let's just give Ruto where credit is. Amazing branding. Though very expensive again, but you can assume that those women will be putting on some of those uniforms in future. So the idea behind that branding is to make or to paint Mount Kenya region yellow. President Ruth Kenyatta succeeded in branding in 2013 and 2017. The truth of the matter is that in 2017, you would even not meet Railo Dinga's ODM party's branded t-shirts. You would meet only the aspirants, but the, the, the merchandise by ODM were very few. But Jubilee succeeded in branding. But what Ruto is doing has never been done before. The kind of branding we are seeing is a kind of branding which, if he's going to do it the entire country, then I, don't, I can't imagine how costly it is going to be. But the branding he's using today is to make UDA appear as the most visible party on the ground. He was in Yeri, and I'm sure over 10,000 yellow uniforms kind of were there. Those beautiful women dresses and the t-shirts were there. So you'll be assured that today a few border border guys, a few mamambogas or any other person will be donning those t-shirts. So as you walk in Nyeri today, you'll automatically realize that there's a political party here and that party is yellow and it's UDA. So that's the new strategy, just to paint the mountain yellow, number one. Number two, the second thing which the DP, the deputy president is currently using is the power of money. In the past, he was using money, but differently from today. In the past, the deputy president would go to a church, raise funds, disappear. But today, what is happening? In Nyeri on Saturday alone, <laughs> single day, the deputy president went and dished out 7 million Kenyan shillings. Why? Because the deputy president understands that the Kikuyus by nature loves money. And because they love money, you must be seen to be someone who is able to give them money. And I was telling a friend of mine that the 2022 general election is actually going to be the most expensive election. And after this election, this country will have to recover. Just like they did recover from YK92. They, they're, they're actually going to it will take them time to recover to an extent where, as a poor man, you can just go out there, sell your policies, and people will buy. It's going to be expensive both at the gubernatorial level, at the presidential level, at the MCS level. It's going to be very expensive. So, the deputy president is using that strategically. Raila Odinga went to Nyeri, held the meetings here and there, left. Ruto came, held the rallies, then Akacha, 7 million. You get the drift. So that's his latest strategy, number two. His third strategy, which is working because politics is a game of perception, is the mobilization of crowds. And the mobilization of crowds is actually intended to make a grand entry to the venue. The duty president was entering Nyeri town yesterday. He had over 2,000 motorbikes. These motorbikes were mobilized, paid money, their, their motorbikes fueled, given the yellow t-shirts. So when they were coming from that road, Hooting, coming, 
You know, even if you are just minding your own business, you'll be amazed. You'll be standing there watching at them. 2000. So that is his latest strategy. Mobilize crowds as much as possible. Of course, he started this a bit earlier, but now with the branding, and I think the fact that Red Odinga was kind of received in uh, central Kenya, he needed to surpass that. So without taking any chance, get 2,000 motorbikes. Brand them. From around 10 kilometers, come with them to town. And as you come with them to town, crowd build, add to the convoy you have, huge, huge, and huge. And why is he doing this? reacting to Raila Odinga. When Raila Odinga was going to, was it? Nyandarwa. Over 300 vehicles were spotted leaving Nairobi to Nyandarwa. Someone I think recorded. So the deputy president is also telling these people that when it comes to crowd mobilization, I'm the king. And because politics is a game of perception, those who watch the crowd, you cannot convince them that Ruto is not the popular guy on the ground because even Uru Kenyatta might not have done it that way. So that is third strategy. <clears throat> His fourth strategy is to follow <clears throat> Relo Dinga after he concludes his events. And which makes the question is Relo Dinga a threat to the DP? Why would the DP follow Relo Dinga? He was in uh, like he followed him there. He was in Nyandarwa, he followed him there. Rela was in Nyeri, he followed him there. We don't know the next place Rela Odinga will be. He will definitely follow him. So that's also his strategy. Why is he doing this? Very simple. Assuming Rela Odinga went to, let me use like Kipia, like Kipia the way he did. And for the first time, people turned up in large numbers. In fact, the DP even followed him in Nakuru again after he left. Let's say, People, the way he was received in, 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 in Laikipia or even Nakuru. And then the DP don't follow him. A perception will be created that Raila Odinga is gaining. So the, uh, the DP is strategically following Raila Odinga for one thing or for one reason. He wants to stop people from discussing Raila Odinga. Like when Raila Odinga went to Laikipia, he was well received. So he would be assured that the entire week people were discussing about Raila Odinga, you know, you know. Then... The DP comes, organizes a bigger meeting. So it means you can't discuss Raila Odinga's politics. You will now be discussing the latest, which is William Ruto's visit to the area. So I think that's something which is also working for the DP. His fifth strategy, and this is also just for perception, and I think it's working for him, is to engineer defections. I don't know whether they're real defections, but just to engineer defections. Because for me, the only two people who have defected to Ruto's camp is, uh, is uh, Anwai Guru. Because Anwai Guru was actively involved in Azimio Laomoja and Ketwaru Guru. But even yesterday, the deputy president and his team announced that two people had actually defected to his camp. And even on this channel, so many people ask me to comment about the Nyeri governor defecting to Ruto's camp. And I think the, the Othaya, is it the Othaya member of parliament, also defecting to Ruto's camp. And I reminded this guy that as far as I'm concerned, those are not defections. And I ask anybody even on this platform, let me know when the Nyeri governor defected to Azimio. Of course, he attended that event and he used that opportunity to actually just pass Tanga Tanga message. Nothing. He never defected. He has never joined any other meeting. Like, the, let's say, like when Ketwar Guru left, he was actively involved. This guy just <clears throat> joined probably because he was under pressure from the president or from President Ru Kenyatta's team to join Raila Odinga's event on that day. Apart from that, he has ne never featured anywhere. The Othaya, is it the Othaya member of parliament? Sorry. I think the, the third member of parliament. What is his name? When he was in uh, Azimio. He's just been there. In Tangatanga, but the people you call cowards, people who, 
monitor situations wanangoja ya hii kitu itaenda wapi you know but he's doing this strategically for perception when the, the four governors defected from jubilee and now dp ruto has these two defectors from jubilee the message out there is that jubilee is dead and that's all politics and lastly and this is also very important his latest strategy is that the deputy president is no longer attacking president uhuru kenyatta for jubilee failures he's only taking advantage of success when ruto began his campaigns especially in the larger mount kenya region what he used to do was very simple he would give his his brigades briefs so each one of them would point out why they are supporting dp that the president has failed them there's you what what so many failures they used to point out the dp would just watch then they go at some point even the dp started responding to the president the president went silent and started fixing fix, fixing things if it thrown he started fixing 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 so within a year or so the president has covered so much so he cannot be attacked on in in terms of delivery so the dp and his brigades are no longer attacking president rukenyata see the way alice waome would call a, a press conference or even dindi nyoro would call for a pre- press conference yeah, just to attack the president they are no longer doing that why because attacking president rukenyata is not good for them they have been advised that attacking the president is actually not helping their cause but instead now they are focusing on attacking president uru kenyatta's allies when uh, the deputy president was in nyeri for example their pet subject was kanini kega everybody was stood kanini kega kanini kega kanini kega why because he supports the azimio la umoja i don't know what you think but that's my take again for those who are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two and click the subscribe button there's a chance that rigadi gashagwa is likely to be william ruto's running mate from the larger mount kenya region if you've been following this channel i once opined that rigadi gashagwa was actually overtaking overtaking william ruto i mean was actually overtaking moses kuria mwangi kiunjuri and waiguru and others as the potential running mate to the deputy president it has come to pass i don't know what you think he might not be the running mate but as things stand today rigadi gashagwa is way ahead of the rest in terms of support for the dp and if dp had to make a choice what to make a choice that choice would be rigadi gashagwa thank you until next time bye bye